thank you for joining us for this week's report. In our top news this week, on July 16th, the Senate Committee gave their report to the Senate President on the matters of Senators Tommy Ramangasau Jr. and Hokans Baules, recommending that no further action be taken against the said Senators. The Committee reports that according to the constitutional provisions, the Senate as an entity is the sole judge of its members and has the authority to suspend, expel, or discipline a member provided that a member is guilty of disorderly behavior, neglect of duty, or violation of the oath of office. The committee further reported that the main issue to address was whether or not there is any constitutional or statutory provision that requires any senator convicted of any crime to resign his seat. The committee reported that there is not, citing two separate legal opinions issued by Senate Legal Counsel Ridpath and Kalubag. The committee, however, noted that Senator Baules' incarceration prevents him from performing his duties as a senator and therefore leaves the matter to the discretion of the Senate President. On Thursday, July 19th, the Ministry of Finance released $4 million of the $16 million loan from the Asian Development Bank to the National Development Bank of Palau for the purpose of purchasing underwater fiber optic cable. According to reports, the funds will be used by NDBP as a loan to PNCC for the purchase of the existing Guam-Philippine fiber optic cable. The President stated that the process was earlier approved by the OEK through a resolution. Earlier records show that in February, the Council of Chiefs expressed their concerns to the President regarding the use of the ADB loan for the fiber optic cable, stating that the protection of our people's health and the environment is our first priority and responsibility. The $16 million loan was negotiated by the Republic to support the establishment of the Palau Water and Sewer Corporation and to reform the water and sanitation sector. Out of the $16 million loan, $6 million will be used for the water sector improvement program. Palau has struggled to maintain its sewer and sanitation systems over the years, mainly due to lack of funding. The Micronesia Conservation Trust has become the first Micronesian non-governmental organization to participate in the fiscal year 2012 Combined Federal Campaign, or CFC. CFC is the only authorized solicitation of employees in the federal workplace, which raises millions of dollars annually through national and international campaigns. Assistant Secretary of Insular Affairs Tony Babauta wrote to Rear Admiral Bushong about the news of MCT's inclusion, stating that with its inclusion in the CFC, MCT is now eligible to receive pledges from the many federal employees and military personnel who are from the region, currently stationed there, or have an interest in the insular areas. I highly encourage other NGOs in the insular areas to explore their eligibility for the CFC. The campaign season runs from September 1st to December 15th. MCT supports biodiversity conservation in Palau, FSM, RMI, Guam, and CNMI. A helicopter crash in California on May 9th resulted in one dead and one injured. Fish and Fins owner Novat Bornovsky was taking helicopter pilot lessons four miles from French Valley Airport in Murrieta, California, in preparation for bringing a helicopter to Palau. The Robinson R-22 helicopter was performing a hovering excessive when it rolled onto its side and crashed at 10.17 a.m., killing the veteran pilot Carl Nurmi, while student pilot Bornovsky escaped with minor injuries. Fish and Fins is reportedly bringing a helicopter to Palau in November of 2012 for tours and will be located next to the Palau International Coral Reef Center. The instructor pilot, Carl Nurmi, was also known as Johan. He held national and world records and was the vice president and owner of the USA Academy of Aviation. The United States House of Representatives Subcommittee approved the stalled Compact of Free Association for Palau. This represents another step forward in the languishing process, which still needs approval by the full House of Representatives and the Senate. While GAAP funding has been approved on an annual basis since 2009, the compact approval process has become a hot political topic with the upcoming election. Compact Ambassador Joshua Koshiba has gotten tough with the U.S. and by a letter dated July 17, 2012, threatened to secure ties with China and Arab states if the U.S. does not move forward. 
Critics say this threat makes Palau appear desperate and too willing to exchange allies in favor of a quick buck. Others believe now is the time to stand with the U.S. and show them the same patience that the U.S. has shown Palau. The compact delay is the result of a new U.S. law that requires offsets in the budget to be shown in the amount equal to the proposed compact spending before it can be approved. OTV's political analyst believes that the approval of the compact before the election is unlikely. The Marshall Islands government is expected to terminate the contractor who was hired five years ago to design a new hospital. In an interview with ABC Radio Australia, Marshall Islands journal editor Giff Johnson revealed that more than $2 million in U.S. funding has been spent on a hospital design that is far from completion. The Guam-based contractor reportedly does not have any experience in hospital designs and reportedly designed a hospital with many violations. The current hospital is 25 years old and portions of it are in bad conditions, mainly due to lack of maintenance. The RMI cabinet reportedly talked about terminating the current contractor, hiring a new one and starting over. However, a meeting has been scheduled and nothing has been made official in terms of what the government will do to address the issue. Chief Justice Arthur Nguyen-Raklesang on July 17th granted Koror State Government's motion for summary judgment. According to the order, the court found that Koror State Government provided the Republic with the statutorily required detailed description of the purpose of the increased Rock Island and Jellyfish Lake fees. The judgment was entered without trial after Koror State Government and Governor Adachi, the Republic and the Minister of Justice both filed lawsuits against each other. The court found that there was justification in the law for the uses of the additional fees, including monitoring and preserving marine resources. The fees went into effect on June 1st. Ministry of Health's Chief of Nursing, Ms. Wahine Ulang-ong, passed away this Friday, July 20th. Ulang-ong worked for the Belau National Hospital for more than 30 years and was a strong supporter of nurses' rights. She most recently led a peaceful assembly with Belau National Hospital nurses on Nurse Day to raise awareness about issues that nurses continued to face over the years. She was a hardworking member of the hospital who was pushing for the validation of nursing as a profession and salary increase for all nurses. We at OTV would like to send our deepest condolences to her friends and family. She will forever be remembered for her hard work and dedication to the hospital and the people of Palau. On July 18th, Peter Adelby swore in at the Capitol building as the new Palau ambassador to the Republic of China, Taiwan. Adelby was previously charged d'affaires at Palau's consulate office in Japan, which he served for many years. In 2010, Jackson Henry, the previous Palau ambassador to Taiwan, resigned, stating that his integrity had been irreparably damaged by the false advertisements placed by Morris Davidson in the Palau newspapers. In efforts to save crops and improve the agriculture sector in Palau, the Palau Department of Agriculture and the Israeli government are working together to control fruit flies. Here's Rolinda with more details on the project. Hello, everyone. Um, today we're at the Penthouse Hotel, and uh, there's a, a distinguished, distinguished guest in Palau right now that are helping the agriculture the, uh, sector in Palau. So uh, I would like to give the opportunity to, uh, to give the opportunity to uh, Director of Agriculture to explain uh, what the project is and what kind of assistance uh, Palau is getting from this uh, project. Okay, uh, Rolinda, young Director of President. El Mlora government de Israel, Mashe Abelawak Malit and Mala Fruits and Yi, our farmers are mal marine produce of fruits and Muramagit. Mung Mutirak Mutirak Se, Embergoa, ya government de Israel, Amlodur Clia, Tail Terul experts, Maya Dr. Cross, Ma Dr. Ben Yuida, Pigida. Tirgangatia El Al Lomestra, Mariate, a best technology of fruit fly, ka fruit fly and Abelaw. Thomas need a lot of testing in a can, and Mergomo of Edelwood adapting in Mervela. Say, give the ring down really care that they will other not care the man's or a president of Mosel on Titagi than yes for Mervela. Thank you all very much for the opportunity to talk about uh, what type of project and assistance you're helping Palau with in terms of agriculture. Uh, can you tell us what kind of methods or what are you planning to do in terms of eradicating fruit, 
fruit flies from our crops? First of all, thank you, the President of Palau. Thank you, Mr. Fred, the, Minister, the Agriculture Director. My name is uh, Dr. Shmuel Gross. My name is uh, Dr. Shaul Ben Yehuda. And we are both uh, colleagues, and we are working in the Extension Service of the State of Israel, Ministry of Agriculture. We have a lot of experience with the control the food fly. Not exactly the food fly that you have here in Palau. We have another kind of species of food fly, but we hope that our experience and what we bring with us, some, uh, some crops to see if they also control, can we control with them the food fly, will help the agriculture in Palau, and maybe the farmer can grow mango, papaya, and so on without any damage of the uh, food fly. Because now what we see that is a lot of damage and a lot of food drop on the food because the attack on the food fly and what, and what he does to the uh, food in Palau. Uh, the, I know the goal is to control fruit, fruit fly, fruit, I'm sorry, fruit flies. Um, uh, looking at that goal, how soon do you think that can be executed with the, with the technology and with the study that you guys are, will be going through this project? This is only the first steps. Don't think that it immediately happened. It will take a long time. First of all, we have to make a model farm to see if the technology is work. If not, we shall have to find another technology. We are not in hurry. If you, we are in hurry, we shall lose all the project. Therefore, give the time. The food fly is a very, a very strange enemy. He can do anything he wants. Therefore, we have to learn. We have to do this, the things easily and go step by step. We have no a watch in our hand to see how, how, how time it's how time it's take. We cannot do it like that. We'll hope that in the end we'll be succe we'll succeed to control the food fly. All stage of money, the time of the time of the experts are in the controlling of fruit flies. The young Dilanga Omsu will do a messenger in Morong and then start the project. The time will say rolling down a cell method to Malu Shell Technology Blal the Lira Israel. Was it the Lee? Maria Mod and Yasra Ragidle Fruit Fly Shirabello. Matadimel test the Masengral method as a subiral adapting in Mervelao. I would like to mention that the Green Revolution and the Red Proposing of President Talimar Mervelao. How long of a project is it going And will it cover the uh, entire agriculture sector? Uh, sector uh, the Amral part of the Clone Project of the Green Revolution, the initiative of the President. And we got to the last one, we got to the SL Fruits in Mervelao. And then we got to the SL Fruits, and we got to the control of the fruit fly in Mervelao. And we got to the SL Fruits, hopefully, we got to the SL Fruits, and we got to the SL Fruits. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Ro. The Ministry of Health, in collaboration with the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Southern Illinois University, is officially launching the first photojournalism book showcasing the public health impacts of climate change in Palau. The purpose of the book is to raise awareness about public health impacts of climate change in the Republic. Photos displaying saltwater intrusion in taro patches, sea level rise, fishing, and other climate change impacts were taken on location in Palau by SIU students. The launch will take place on Wednesday, July 25th at 10 a.m. at the Ngara Amayang Cultural Center. The first 200 participants will receive a free copy of the book. And now for this week's environmental news from PCS. Ali to all viewers in Palau and hello to all viewers in Micronesia. Adena klabor lem si si el arm radab el selab lulad ingarinya betogra erul dartem ogi mel gagros el badengila adeng ingarinya adeng rangawal ma adeng ra el sel alamola el sel belau ingadam tiga seventeen el gagros el badengila adeng ingarinya metal matuyol nalgal matmut makuk pebin el alt time em betogra adeng el mangai radial er omingit a omilul adeng akmal di melay abgalil Ma oisal, ma gamril, e moita al adal. 
Aigang al Bagalil, a then a most shark fin soup. Pekarra and Bogor than a hundred million el then a mat el girela shark fin soup. Aigal Bogalil, Moisala, a then al tap the emakpir through air al porta el a shark fin soup. A omalela shark fin soup, a tuira diag al marang, el toguera sina el kmo. Melisi abdengir al maklol ad. A oisala aden adi cartilets el gora plastic. El osisiu ma cartilets la isngir ma dengir al ad. El diaga e yorngi. En di aden akmal virga klo a omeliul. A aden a manga el awud radial el omengi dar abtogal belur abelur ad. Tiang lomrul ad diaga lungil blagrad al. Len tomal la akmal abtogal aden. Mar scientist tamla mobigik le len soal mon mo diaga aden. Then a hotel muclor to tell el more marine ecosystems. Then a garni sail got a vabra food chain radava. A garlela then a mangar a rogu in eagle matadim cc. A mangar tirigel smear marmit ut. Sell a garni a then a rogu in eagle a diplo old in cc. Am cc in eagle on il gala, leng malisi abdangir. Aurela then a umtabe rabalu radava. A then a olga ba el dois rangigal ma bebir ra arm ra da men diagal bol el salmo to mal bolo odre dra ulagal men moul a bebir ra arm a guk madra gal a la ga then en mal di i mom kasai a al darir ar adra e a dorida a then ra da en matamala ecosystems ra da bebir om su ba mo a a bol borio el dois ra then Ma il doi seratuna mendiri keramaran morio. Sebab akla ada yang berbelau. Lagam itu trir ada ader orang yang terangut al belu melengai ada yang berbelau yang mum itu uta dapel berbelau. Aungil mesisi el dab atau spera ada yang ada yang berbelau ada yang di klor tu telil el mula dab mendiri ker klor tu telil el mula karul el tuera tourism. Ada ader ada yang akmal klor tu telil le turis telau dab amoi tab tolu dab dulu meseringi. Aw lagu ada aden, adi sesea arale mergo. Ada bel belau am sebab kar aden, am sebab kla aden ar belau. And thank you for watching this outreach and awareness program from Palau Conservation Society for the conservation of biodiversity of Palau and Micronesia. And see you next week. Thanks, Yalop. After the break, RMI expressed support to Fiji, Haunted Palau Hospital, and more news after this. Stay tuned. Join us for the launch of the new photojournalism book, Impacts of Climate Change in Palau. The event will be held at the Naramayang Cultural Center on Wednesday, July 25th at 10 a.m. We will have guest speakers, food, and free books for the first 200 people. Cinema shows the movies you love in 3D high definition. Playing this week at 3D Cinema at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. every day. We need one mermaid. You can laugh. I'm a bad man. All part of the plan. Yes. No. At 5.30 p.m. every day and at 12.30 on Saturday and Sunday. Blinds what you feel in here and the comedy never ends. You did not feel it in here. Rio. Yeah, little King Kong.
Also enjoy our video game arcade and movie rental, 3D Cinema. To reserve a seat, call 488-8954. I'm striving for 25. I'm striving for 25. I'm striving for 25. I'm striving for 25. We're striving for 25. Strive for 25 is focused on decreasing obesity by 25% and increasing breast and cervical cancer screening by 25%. Join us for a special evening to celebrate women's health on August 18th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. We will have free screenings, entertainment, food, and more. Located in the Visadic Building on Libu Street, third floor above Cue Ball. Join us and strive for 25. Thank you for staying with us. Now, moving on with more news. The Marshall Islands National Telecommunications Authority has signed a deal with the Solomon Islands Telecommunications Company that will bring NTA significant revenue according to Radio New Zealand. B-Mobile of the Solomon Islands will buy excess satellite bandwidth from the Marshall Islands government, NTA Telecom. Two years ago, the Marshalls company installed an underwater fiber optic cable linking it to Guam and ending its need for most of its satellite bandwidth for communications. But the National Telecommunications Authority was under contract for long-term satellite use. With the deal with the Solomon's tele telecom company, NTA will be generating revenue from this excess satellite capacity. The Republic of the Marshall Islands President Christopher Loyak recently met with Fijian Prime Minister Baini Marama to foster diplomatic ties and enhance bilateral relations. During the meeting, Loyak told Baini Marama that the Marshall Islands will continue to rely on Fiji's leadership on many important issues in the region, such as climate change. During his meetings, he also presented a $5,000 check towards Fiji's flood relief fund that will assist Fijians who were affected. Another area that was discussed looked at the idea of pursuing the options of direct flights between both countries. Last year, Fiji and the Marshall Islands signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Development Cooperation, which is also used as a framework for enhancing bilateral ties. LOAC attended the three-day climate change meeting that was held at the University of the South Pacific. During his trip, he also met with other Fijian leaders, such as Fiji's president. A new fisheries and nautical training school in the Marshall Islands is expected to open before the end of the year. The RMI Marine Resources Authority, in collaboration with the College of the Marshall Islands, is working on establishing a new training program that aims to increase the ranks of Marshall Islanders who are employed on fishing and other types of vessels. The authority previously ran its own training center, however, it closed three years ago. Fisheries Director Glenn Joseph stated that the Marshalls urgently needed more trained observers to place on per seine fishing boats. The authority, the authority currently only has 30 observers, however, Joseph said 100 observers are needed as the parties to the Nauru Agreement, or PNA, requires that all per seine fishing boats have an observer to monitor the fish catches. The CMI and the authority is aiming to recruit Marshallese with at least a high school diploma for the training program, which will be offered in both short-term and long-term courses. 
The Japan government recently handed over a grant assistance worth a little over $60,000 through the Grant Assistance for Grassroots Human Security Project to the Pompei State Government and the Piggery Advisory Council in efforts to manage piggery waste. The grant will be used to purchase two tow-behind wood chippers as the basis for a dry litter piggery support project. During the handover ceremony, Japan Ambassador Eichi Suzuki stated that one of the main topics at the recently held Palm 6 is how to protect human security in the island countries. The dry litter system is a desirable model to enhance human security with simple approaches using low-cost local resources. One of the wood chippers will be used at the training farm at the College of Micronesia FAM campus where farmers will be able to learn the dry litter piggery management method. The other will be maintained by the Pompeii Agriculture Department. The Yap State Public Auditor Office and Office of the Attorney General recently signed and entered into a memorandum of understanding to work collaboratively and mutually when it comes to criminal investigations relating to government finances and resources. The Office of the Yap State Public Auditor's Compliance Investigation Division receives allegations of fraud, waste, and mismanagement where they conduct a preliminary inquiry to determine whether or not there is justifiable suspicion to refer the matter to the Office of the Attorney General. Pursuant to the MOU, all parties agree to work together to investigate and prosecute financial crimes. The MOU is a commitment between the parties in their efforts to fight fraud and corruption within the government. Youth leaders from the Pacific who are participating in the 11th Festival of Pacific Arts in the Solomon Islands also had the opportunity to participate in the Youth Speak Workshop. The workshop, which was hosted and supported by various international organizations, sought views from youth on cultural issues. A key issue that was discussed during the three-day workshop was on the impact of climate change on environment and culture. Else Tele of Palau and Palau's minister Faustina Ruur Marug and other representatives participated in the workshop. With more knowledge on cultural issues, Tele plans to file her report from the workshop to Palau's Youth Council, stating that it really inspires me to preserve culture so that people in the future can have the same experience as we did at the festival. Micronesians all have different reasons as to why they enlist in the United States military. For Private First Class Jared Dillon Jamila, his family, particularly his two-year-old daughter, was the inspiration behind his decision to join the U.S. Marine Corps. It makes me homesick being halfway around the world. My mother was struggling to take care of our family, and it was hard to leave her struggling like she was. I didn't want her to suffer, so I decided to enlist. Everything I do is for my family and, most importantly, for my daughter, said Jamila in an interview published by the Marine Corps Recruit Depot online. According to the senior drill instructor, Jamila shows perseverance and motivation, and although he stands at 5'2 and weighs 105 pounds, he's a force to be reckoned with. Jamila is currently undergoing recruit training in San Diego, California. The presidential and vice presidential debates have been confirmed to take place in August, sponsored by the Palau Bar Association and the Palau Chamber of Commerce. The vice presidential debate is scheduled for August 14th, followed by the presidential debate at the Ngara Amayang Cultural Center. Both events will be covered live on radio and television. And starting this week, OTV will be airing its election update separately. Watch the full election update after the news on OTV. A couple of images have been circulating around the island, leading people to believe that paranormal activities exist in the Belau National Hospital. The images were reportedly taken randomly at the nurse's station at the medical ward after nurses smelled perfume. According to information obtained by OTV, the ghost in the photos is apparently someone who died at the hospital a few years back. However, some who have inspected both photos believe the entire story is a hoax courtesy of Photoshop an image editing computer software, as the ghost appears to be in the same exact position and angle on both photos. In order to prove how easy it is to manipulate images with today's technology and computer software, OTV staff and Blanche Sali of Penthouse created their own version of Ghosts Caught on Camera.
There's also an Apple application for iPods, iPads, and other Apple products that enables users to edit images. Earlier this year, the series Sandmasters, which airs on the Travel Living Channel in the U.S., filmed an episode on location in Palau. OTV will exclusively premiere that episode tonight, July 20th, at 9 p.m. on Channel 23. The Palau episode was produced by Painless Productions in association with Rollum Productions. Rollum would like to thank Palau Pacific Resort, the Palau Shark Sanctuary, Palau Visitors Authority, Sam's Tours, and the CAT team for all of their support during the production. Be sure to catch it on OTV. Six athletes will represent the Federated States of Micronesia at the 2012 Olympics, including Greco-Roman wrestler Keitani Graham from Chuuk State, who trained in Honolulu for more than a year and got a late tripartite invitation to the Games on June 23rd. It's the first time FSM will be sending a wrestler after participating in three Paralympics. Graham will be joining Kirsten Hadley and Deborah Daniel, who will swim in the men's and women's 50-meter freestyle events and John Howard and Miter Wendelin will run in the 100-meter sprints. Rounding out the group is, of course, the pride of Oceania weightlifting and potential medalist Manueli Tulo, who will be competing in the 56-kilogram category. Jim Tobin, Secretary General for the FSM National Olympic Committee, added that this is the first time ever the FSM National Olympic Committee was able to send the swimmers, runners, and coach to a pre-Olympic Games training camp where they've been able to train with world-class British coaches from the Northwest England region. Tobin, Tobin said that the FSM contingent received more athlete scholarships than any other National Olympic Committee in the region, thanks in large part to Guam National Olympic Committee President Rick Bloss, who serves as Secretary General of the Oceania National Olympic Committee. The FSM NOC, with funding support from the IOC, is working with FSM Telecommunications Corporation to broadcast the Olympic Games live in Yap, Chuuk, Pohnpei, and Kozurai via feed from Sky TV of New Zealand. In Palau Olympian news, OTV has received word from Palau NOC Secretary General Baklai Tamangil that weightlifter Stevik Patrice is officially on his way to London to join his fellow Palauan Olympians who have been training there since the end of June. Patrice, who received one of the three worldwide tripartite invitations when he finished in the top five of the Oceania Weightlifting Championships, has been training intensely at the Oceania Weightlifting Institute in New Caledonia. Patrice will arrive in time to participate in the honorary flag-raising ceremonies for Palau on July 23rd, which we hope to receive coverage from our partners at the Reporters Academy. And speaking of the Reporters Academy, we have another installment of their continuing coverage of Oceania athletes, this time focusing on two Marshall Island Olympians, Anne-Marie Hepler and Jordan Harris. Hi, my name is Anne-Marie Hepler and I'm presenting Marshall Islands at the London 2012 Olympics. Hi, my name is Jordan Harris and I'm representing the Marshall Islands in the London 2012 Olympics. Adjusting to the different pools is always a challenge. Well, we have a 25-yard saltwater pool, and so it's different than freshwater. We float easier. Yeah, I'm improved, still improving. So freshwater, I sink easier, so I have to practice getting my hips up. Um, kicking, because I don't really kick in practice, so I kicking, start kicking better, and uh, my stroke, my pull, to pull me harder to keep my hips up, so the pull is difficult because I have to pull faster and harder. My, he stresses a lot on my arms because I just have bad arm positioning, I guess, when I swim. So I'm trying to get the proper technique down and keeping my head down when I swim because I pick my head up a lot when I swim. So I'm looking forward to yeah, the, seeing the pool, all the different athletes, and I'm looking forward to opening ceremonies too. There's a lot of things I'm looking forward to. Uh, yes, the sightseeing, mostly 
the pool and seeing the major athletes like uh, Ryan Lochte, Michael Phelps, seeing those people, watching them swim. That's what I'm looking forward to. As always, we'd like to thank the Reporters Academy for their support. And if you'd like to view more of their videos online, visit youtube.com slash reportersacademy. Within the current state of technology, providing unprecedented access to our Oceania athletes, I stumbled across this cute little story from Woolsack.org, an organization that promotes the practice and use of British wool by making wool pillow gifts for the incoming Olympians. Woolsack hosted a small handover ceremony involving some young knitters, including our own Rodman Del Tul and Ruby Gabrielle seen here posing with their pillows. The website writes, the athletes were very impressed with their cushions and barely let them out of their arms after the presentation. As you can see, Rodman getting cozy with his cushion. The site goes on to say that the children were thrilled to meet the athletes and participated in a race afterwards, receiving Olympic badges as a memento of their visit. And finally, last week we reported that the Pacific has only one medal to its credit in the long and storied history of the Olympics. So we've been taking a look at the 28 different competitions on hand in London to find an event that Islanders could perform well in. Sailing would seem like a logical choice, considering it's an integral part of island culture and how Islanders were able to migrate throughout the Pacific. And perhaps the best athlete representing Oceania in that category would be 20-year-old Halema Williams of the Cook Islands. Hailing some 10,000 plus miles away from London from the small northern island of Manahiki, Williams enters the Olympics as a wildcard qualifier in a competition that's traditionally been dominated by the British. Williams coach Ben Patton says she's really good at making quick decisions, which could serve her well with England's typically tricky weather conditions. Hopefully, Halema, who will also be carrying the Cook Islands flag during the opening ceremonies, can bring recognition to her tiny island traditionally known for its pearls by perhaps adding gold, silver, or bronze to that list. And that'll do it for this week's Micro Sports. Back to you, Blair. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Before we go, I'd like to remind OTV, OTV viewers in Palau to watch OTV2 Channel 29 weekly for the election news update. OTV will also be airing a full special on the 11th Festival of Pacific Arts, so stay tuned to OTV. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you back next week for more news. I'm Blair Phillips, signing out.